Gravitational potential energy is not the only potential energy. In general, the potential energy is the stored energy of a system due to its position, shape, or configuration. In last video, we have learned that the change in gravitational potential energy does not depend on the path taken by the object. This property is shared by all potential energies, and we call gravity a conservative force due to this property. In general, any force that has this property is called a conservative force. And any conservative force must have a corresponding potential energy. Examples are gravity and gravitational potential energy, as well as spring force and spring potential energy. You may recall that spring obeys Hooke's law, the force by a spring is proportional to its deformation, meaning stretch or compression. Let a moving object attach to a relaxed spring. The spring will be compressed while the object gets slower. In the process, the spring force does a negative work. It transfers the kinetic energy of the object into its own energy, which we define as the spring potential energy. Both spring force and gravity are conservative forces because the work done by them will only depend on the initial and final points. There will be more conservative forces whenever a conservative force does a positive work. It reduces its corresponding potential energy. And when it does a negative work, it increases its corresponding potential energy. In other words, the work done by a conservative force is always opposite to the change in the corresponding potential energy. And we call the work done by conservative force as W sub C, and which is always equal to negative change in potential energy. Assuming only conservative forces are involved in a system, then the total work done by all forces will be Wc. Based on the work and kinetic energy theorem, it is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the system. W net equals change in kinetic energy. And W net is equal to Wc because all forces here are conservative forces. Also, we just said that Wc is always equal to negative change in potential energy. So if we combine all the three equations, we get negative Wpe equals delta Ke. If we move these two terms together, we have delta Pe plus delta Ke equals zero, or delta Pe plus Ke equals zero. And this means that Ke plus Pe is equal to a constant. And sometimes, we say KEI plus PEI equals KEF plus PEF. This is equivalent to PE plus K equals constant. I means initial, F means final. And this is called conservation of mechanical energy. And keep this in your mind that this is only true when we have only conservative forces in the system. And let's use conservation of mechanical energy to solve a problem. And here is a 0.100 kilogram toy car, which is propelled by a compressed spring. The car follows a track that rises 0.180 meters above the starting point. The spring is compressed 4.00 centimeters and has a force constant of 250.0 newtons per meter. Assuming work done by friction to be ne negligible, let's find A 
how fast the car is going before it starts up the slope, and B, how fast it is going at the top of the slope. Let's solve part A first. Let's find what the strategy we're going to use to solve part A. For part A, initially the car is compressed to the spring, and the spring is compressed by 4.00 centimeters. So that means initially the spring has a potential energy stored. Then the car is released. In the process of releasing, energy has been transferred, but there's no friction. So only spring force is involved in the process of releasing. And this is a typical condition for conservation of mechanical energy. So we can say KEI plus PEI equals KEF plus PEF. Now, the question is where is I and where is F? Based on this description, we can easily find that I has to be the point where the spring is compressed by 4.00 centimeters and the car has not started moving yet. So let's call this point I. And final point is point when the car just leaves the spring. So that's this point right here. We'll call this point F. So when the car just leaves the spring, we know that the spring is relaxed. And there's no any compression. So the potential energy in the spring should be zero. All right, we are going to use this equation to solve part A. So let me rewrite conservation of mechanical energy equation, KEI plus PEI equals KEF plus PEF. And we know that KEI is equal to zero because the car has not started to move yet. And also we know that PEF is equal to zero because when the car leaves the spring, the spring is relaxed. There's no stored energy inside. So this equation can be reduced to PEI equals KEF. And we know that PEI for spring is always equal to one and a half times K times x squared. And the Ke for the car is always one half times m times speed squared. We have learned that K is equal to 250.0 newtons per meter, which is called spring constant. And x is how much the spring has been compressed initially which is equal to 4.00 centimeters, but we do convert centimeters to meters. It's going to be 0 0.0400 meters. We also know that the car is 0 0.100 kilograms. So all three numbers are known. We can solve for V by square root k x square over m and we plug numbers we have 250 times 0 0.04 square divided by 0 0.1 the answer is 2.00 meters per second And part B is asking how fast it is going at the top of slope, which is right here. So we can use same idea to define this point as the final point. Initial point can be either the very beginning or when the car just 
left the spring. So either one can be treated as the initial point. But we can still use the same equation, KEI plus PEI equals KEF plus PEF. So this time, let's pick the very beginning as the initial point. Then part B is going to be still KEI plus PEI equals KEF plus PEF. Now, again, the reason we can use this equation is because there's no friction or friction can be negligible in the process. There's only gravity. There is only a spring force. So in short, there's only conservative forces. That's why conservation of mechanical energy can be used. And we know that KEI is zero. And um, we know um, PEF is actually equal to not zero because there is another potential energy involved in the final point, which is gravitational potential energy. So PEF is actually equal to MGH. And H is equal to 18 centimeters. So we have 0 0.1 times 9.8 times 0 0.18, which is equal to 0 0.1764 joules. We also know that PEI is equal to 1 half kx squared, which is equal to 0.2. Choose. So this equation can be reduced to 0 0.2 equals 1 half mv squared plus 0 0.1764. mv is equal to square root of 2 times 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1764 divided by m, which is 0 0.1. The answer is 0 0.687 meters per second.